When building Android apps, it's important to integrate accessibility testing as part of your development process. In this video, we'll talk about what it means to test for accessibility in your app and summarize the different ways to approach testing. Here are some of the things you should look for when testing your app for accessibility. Do all buttons and images have a meaningful label? Do all text and images have sufficient color contrast in both light and dark mode? Do all interactable UI elements have an adequate touch target size? And can a user complete all the user flows in the app using an accessibility service such as TalkBack? Let's briefly recap why it's important to test for each of these things in your app, starting with meaningful labels. When an accessibility service such as TalkBack is used to interact with your app, each UI element is announced by the content description provided. If an image button doesn't include a content description, TalkBack will announce it as an unlabeled button. However, with the meaningful content description, TalkBack will announce it as add task button, double tap to activate. This gives the user much better context about the purpose of the button. To learn more about best practices around labeling elements, check out the video, Labeling Images for Accessibility. Color contrast for text and images is another important aspect to consider when testing for accessibility. When foreground and background colors of UI elements have insufficient contrast, text can be hard to read and icons can be hard to see. Proper color contrast helps users with visual impairments more easily use your app and helps everybody in general use your app in bright settings, such as outdoors in the sun. To learn more, the color contrast for accessibility video goes in depth about best practices for implementing and testing for sufficient color contrast. Proper color contrast helps users to see what's on the screen, but it's also important to ensure that users can easily interact with the elements on screen. Any on-screen element that someone can touch to perform an action on your app should be large enough for reliable interaction. For users with mobility impairments such as hand tremors, small touch targets may be difficult to interact with. Even users with perfect touch may struggle to easily use controls if they are using one hand, have large fingers, have low vision, or are exposed to shaking such as when they are walking or riding a bus. So, it's important to provide reliable interactions for all users by ensuring UI elements have a sufficient touch target size. Learn more about ensuring adequate touch targets in the video, Touch Targets. Lastly, it's important to remember that not everybody interacts with their device with gestures such as taps and swipes. Therefore, it's important to test your app by navigating through it with an accessibility service such as TalkBack or Switch Access. By interacting with your app using an accessibility service, you can experience the app as your users would. When exploring your app with an accessibility service, you should pay a close attention to the following. Are you able to reach all the interactable elements on the screen? Are you able to complete all the user flows easily? For example, if there is a drag and drop action, is an alternative provided? Learn more about the accessibility services TalkBack and Switch Access in the two videos TalkBack and Switch Access. Now that we've talked about some of the things to look for when testing accessibility in an app, let's look at some tools that are available to help you with testing. Android Studio contains built-in accessibility checks to help make your layouts more accessible. When using the layout editor, you can click on the issue report button to see accessibility related issues, including suggestions on how to fix them. To learn more about the checks in Android Studio, check out the video, What's New in Accessibility for Developers. The Accessibility Scanner app is another tool that can help with your testing flow. Using Scanner, you can take screenshots or videos of your app and see specific suggestions on how to improve the accessibility of your app. If you want an in-depth walkthrough of the Scanner app, including what issues it looks for and how to use it for testing your apps, be sure to check out the Accessibility Scanner video. Another tool that can help you identify ways to improve the accessibility of your app is through Google Play's pre-launch reports. Pre-launch reports are available for all apps distributed on Google Play. These reports are generated after you upload an app to the release channel using the Google Play console and contain snapshots of your app that represent ways to improve your app's accessibility. For more information about pre-launch reports, be sure to check out the documentation linked in the video description below. Besides these tools, you can also incorporate automated testing as part of your development workflow. If you have existing Espresso tests, you can enable and configure accessibility testing using the Accessibility Checks class. With just a few lines of code, you can enable accessibility checks on the entire view hierarchy of the screen that's part of your existing Espresso test. 
The video Espresso and Accessibility Test Framework gives an in-depth overview on how to set up accessibility checks as part of your espresso tests. It's important to remember that the topics brought up in this video are not the only issues that can affect accessibility. And automated testing tools can't detect all issues. Ultimately, it's the users of your app that can best determine whether the app meets their needs and abilities. Thanks for watching, and we hope this video gives a better perspective on how to incorporate accessibility testing into your development process.